Welcome to the Mercedes-Benz Rangers postgame show on a night where the start underwhelmed and the opponent was overwhelmed. The mission statement tonight for the Rangers, start happy and finish with two points. Mission accomplished. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside the Delta MSG studios. John Giannone alongside Steve Valaket. 4 nothing Rangers with the win in Philadelphia. A night where I would say that this game tape is probably not going to be sent for preservation to the Hockey Hall of Fame, but a night where the Rangers realized after what happened last night, go down, treat it like a business trip, take care of business, and get the two points. Exactly. John, that, that game was a pillow fight, okay? <laughs> and the reason why it was a pillow fight was because the Philadelphia Flyers are disinterested and they don't want to care to play any more hockey that matters. And I'll tell you one thing, and I don't know if we've talked about this enough, the Rangers' leadership never allowed games that looked like that to be played. They never let it on their watch. We never watched over the, what, 19 seasons, 20 season, 21 season. I think we counted less than five meaningless games. John, like, this is a really big thing, and I remember us talking about this countlessly, about why is it important that the young players have a good example to play meaningful hockey down the stretch, because the Rangers got close. You know, that letter goes out in 2018. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine, they didn't just stop and quit. I mean, you look at Philadelphia right now, they gotta blow it up. They're talking about retooling? Blow it up. Yeah. You know why? Because losing gets into the walls, and it's tough to get it out, and it's bad there right now, I'm telling you. Um, they have a lot of work to do, and I wonder if they know how much work they have to do because I thought the players were lazy, stupid, and selfish out there. It wasn't good. 51 losses now in 74 games for the Flyers. In fairness, six of the players in the lineup tonight, including the goaltender, had played fewer than eight NHL games. So this was almost a glorified have have minor more league bite team. Than that, though, there right? should be more bite, and there maybe should be more leadership from the players like Kevin Hayes or James Van Riemsdyk or those guys who were in the lineup tonight. We didn't see a whole lot of that tonight. But I will say this. The first eight, ten minutes of the game, it was all flyers. 16 shot attempts, eight shots on goal in the first half of the first period. And were it not for Alexander Georgiev, I'm not saying the flyers would have won this game, but they would have had the lead. What was great was that they didn't score because then the Rangers would have had to chase the game and they would have had to expend unnecessary energy that you want them to keep down the stretch here. But if not for Georgiev, he was the only guy that started on time for the Rangers. He was ready. They were funneling pucks from the point. They were getting everything to the net. They were looking for a garbage goal early and they definitely got discouraged when it didn't work for them. Had they gotten one early, maybe Philadelphia stays in this game mentally a little bit better, but after several saves from Georgiev early where he was tracking the puck through screens and able to slow it down with a freeze, he was able to come up with the big save too. So this is about six shots in where Georgiev now gets a puck to the corner and then another one to the slot where you're starting to say, I don't know if the Rangers are gonna pop out of this because the poke check is, is a play that he had to make here because he felt like the pass wasn't being protected. But it was enough hockey where I was saying at this point, you know, again, slow it down, bring the pace down in this game, take control. And if not for the big save here, which then has a rebound chance off of it, you know, you're in, you're in a bit of trouble. You know, you're gonna be chasing the game and it's gonna be a harder night for you. But good for the Rangers that he was ready to play because on their first real shot of consequence, the Rangers are able to score on it. And it's a goal from Kako that you see the hand of the goaltender. I look at this first, and this is just good for people at home to know. If the fingers are up, the glove is gonna be slowed down and that's why he shoots it under the glove of the goaltender, who's a young guy that's coming up and playing, but geez, I mean, I was even looking at their minor league system. They played seven goalies there in the mm -hmm. minors, so there's, there's a lot of work to be done in Philadelphia, but I just don't think that they were engaged enough after that point. If, if they had a score, maybe things would have changed, but mm -hmm. they weren't engaged enough after that point in the first period. Yeah, Georgiev had 10 saves in the first, 12 in the second, 6 in the third. That's his eighth career shutout, second shutout this season, and his sixth consecutive win, 4 nothing. the final for the Rangers. So the takeaways from tonight, most notably two points, nobody got hurt, and Capo Caco officially re-entered the season for the Rangers. Yeah. After missing 31 games, this was his third or fourth game back, finally found himself on the scoreboard, and he did it twice in a span of two periods. I like how he did it, too, because 
he scored these goals from stops in the neutral zone, and then they countered on the rush. And I think this is important because this is the hockey you're going to be looking to see when you get into the postseason. You're going to have to make a play here. And Miller gets it up ice, and the way that <clears throat> the way that Hedl gets it deep, it gives everybody direction on how to get there quickly. So it's almost a forecheck now that sets them up because you want to be able to then have that pinch pressure. The defenseman Miller can pinch because he has pressure from his forwards, and that's why you can all set up your lanes to get to the net. Now, Heedle opens up wide, and the shot then opens up a lane. And there's a big lane there. It looked to me, again, where Philadelphia just gets a bad read and they open up. But another stop in the neutral zone, a rush play. <clears throat> Dying over here on a, on a limb. <clears throat> Water. <laughs> Capo's no, got you all got choked it. up. <laughs> but he looks at he looks at the back post here like right. a beacon, and he gets himself open again on the back side. So, uh, great play by Heedle, support by Goudreau, but able to go open up on the back side is Kako. I think everybody was reading well off of one another at that point. But to my first point, I just like the fact that they were stopping in the neutral zone. Uh, they were getting those stops because Philadelphia was going to carry a lot of risk through the neutral zone. They were going to try and go for it. And I saw them, I mean, we saw them one on four trying to go for it. Right. And that's why it was important to D up, and the Rangers did that. Exactly the message that Steve sent in the pregame, if you were with us, about the importance of neutral zone transition play. Capo Caco had two goals in 25 games before his injury. He had two goals in the first half of tonight's game, and that sent the Rangers on their way. We talked about the player who stood out the most in last night's loss to the Hurricanes, and that was Keandre Miller, a guy who stood out tonight throughout the 60 minutes for the Rangers, Miller's defense partner, Jacob Truba. Physical, right? Physical. And you want to still impose something on the game if you're a physical player because, look, Truba doesn't want to play a game where there's not really hitting in it. It's not fun for him. It's probably why he's not going to enjoy men's league with John. Mm -mm. He wants to get out there and he wants to bang people. So that gets him in the game. I'm sure that he's the type of player that wants to physically get engaged, make a hit, feel like you're in the game, and then you can make better plays defensively because you're more alert. And on the goal, it's a recovered puck that really starts on a four check here. So the puck gets below the goal line, but Philadelphia only has possession of it for a moment because they're standing still and they're calling for a reverse and a wrap that really isn't there for them because once again, Truba pinches in, sees the lane, beacon of hope on the back side here is Panarin. And the first thing you see is the team continuity again. It's a pass and point and the Rangers are flying. And at this point, you get to relax a little bit too because you've got a little bit of runway now in the third period. And look, the Rangers could have added to that if they wanted to go for nine like Washington did last night, but they just stayed steady. Keep some energy here for the stretch drive. Don't overexude yourself. There's no point. That was a it was a lopsided win that could have been much worse, in my opinion. Yeah, running time in the third period, they went 11 and a half minutes without a whistle. So that gave the Rangers the three nothing lead. Andrew Kopp. Empty net, 4 nothing. That's how it would end. As far as Panarin goes, you see him score the goal there on the pass from Truba. He now has goals in three of his last four, six in his last nine. Joe Micheletti likes to say he thinks Panarin's an even better player when he thinks about shooting more and not less, despite being in the top three in the league in assists. Do you think so? Well, he has to because he has to allow the defense, as well as the goalie, to believe that at any moment the shot is coming. So... Whoever the Rangers face in the playoffs, it's going to be important to note that he should establish himself early in the series as a shooter because that will be something the goalie and the defense know that it's always an option rather than just being able to take away his pass. That's important. Uh, he's got so much ability and deceptive ability to show that false information that, yes, it's trickery to a certain degree, but you want to know that there is a result uh, of either shot or pass on every time that he handles the puck. It's important to his game. It's yeah. really important to his game. And it was all part of a 4 nothing win for the Rangers in Philadelphia on a night where Alex Georgiev gets the shutout. Now one goal against in his last two games, 12 goals against during the six-game winning streak.